No. Exactly. But this one right over here, Sam. He's still got this, huh? <laughs> this is my dad's lawnmower, or riding lawnmower. And of course, you know, he didn't buy that till after I left home, which is, you know what that's all about. Absolutely. It's a pretty color. Well, he <laughs> loves this old lawnmower. Won't get off of it. Mows about three acres a week with it. It must have 100,000 miles on it. Basically, it's in reasonably good shape, but we do want to upgrade it a little bit. So the question is, is how much money you put into it. Well, this, this is worth fixing because a while back, Dave and I fixed the deck on it with the pulleys and blades and so on. The thing works pretty good, but the engine's worn out. It's got a carburetor problem. We want to convert it to electric start so we don't have to yank on that rope. So we started pricing things like a carburetor, a carburetor kit, an electric start retrofit with a starter motor, but it needed to have a flywheel change. So here's a better way to go. Down to the local lawnmower store, and you can buy a complete, brand new engine, ready to go. And this is an eight horsepower. It has electric start. Brand new carburetor, air cleaner, right down to the fuel filter. It's all new, just bolt it on and go. Yeah, and before you start to do that, you want to make sure that the basic lawnmower and frame and everything is in pretty good shape before you spend that kind of money. And this is in pretty good shape. The other thing that's nice about this, too, is we put a battery with it. We got the electrical wiring, the solenoid, the switch, all that. So with the electricity now, we can add some accessories, sort of like this light here, so Pop can mow at night. That's right. <laughs> and preventive maintenance is the key. This mower here is over 20 years old. It's the original engine, a little bit of oil here and there, and it'll really make them last a long time. It sure will. We might even put a radio on it. There you go. We're going to take a short break. When we come back, we're going to get started on this, so stay with us. I don't know how we got started into the lawnmower repair business. There are approximately 50 million lawns in America, covering about 25 million acres. That's an area about the size of Virginia. Bring her on up. How's that? Give me up enough for you? Yeah, that's just about uh, just about right for me. All right. All right. Now, what we're getting ready to do is working on Dad's old lawn tractor here. This is what I call the mother of all lawn tractors. This has been around, Sam. Boy, it's pretty neat. I particularly like this uh, candy apple green paint job. <laughs> oh, it sets it off. What we were going to do originally, we were going to install a starter on it. But to do that, yeah, it'll fit right in here. But to do that, you have to put in a new flywheel like this. But the problem is, is this engine is a little too old. I mean, it's got a lot of hours on it. That's right. Now, this thing is air-cooled. We built a carburetor, put a kit in it last year for him. The carburetor still isn't right. It's got tons of miles on it. You know, this is air-cooled. It's probably half, you know, the cylinder's tapered and so on. Doesn't make sense. Yeah, so it's really not practical to spend the money for a starter and all that and put it on an old engine. So what we did is we went down, we bought ourselves a brand-new engine for it, got the electric starter on it, new carburetor, the whole thing. This way, it's a lot cheaper overall. And plus, the tractor's in relatively good shape, other than the fact the engine's a little wore out. That's right. We'll put some new features on it, including, look at this seat. Seat's a little ragged. It's had a lot of use. Same place we bought the engine. We were able to buy a replacement seat. And you can see it's got one bolt, real simple, bolts onto the spring seat. And this is really a kind of a cute little tractor. If you look back here, it's got like a little pickup bed, like my street rod. Look at that. It's got a tailgate and so on. We can mount our battery right here. Yeah, and once we get the battery mounted in there, then we can run our wires up here, hook up our ignition switch, our relay, and all that. Then it'll make it a lot easier for him to start it. That's right. If you look right here in the panel, it actually is a hole cut out for the ignition switch here and for a voltmeter or whatever. So that means when this was made, some of these models were available with electric start, but this probably wasn't set up that way. Well, you can see we got a little bit of work to, here ahead of us. Not going to be too tough, though, just replacing the engine and cleaning it up, even put some new pads right here. This will look pretty nice. We're going to take a short break. When we come back, we're going to get started setting up my dad's old lawn tractor, so stay with us. Now let's pull the steering wheel. We'll get this cover off of here. All right, the steering wheel is off. Yeah. American homeowners will purchase one and a half million riding mowers or lawn tractors this year, spending between $1,000 and $4,000 each. Hey, Lincoln, Listen up, bud. How you doing? <laughs> this thing's stripped. We're going to have to fix that. Hey, welcome back to Shade Tree Mechanic. Well, we're working on the tucker of all lawn tractors right here. Got our engine loose so we can get it out of here. You want to give me a hand here, Sam? Yep, let's lift it up. All right. Clear that pulley. All right, I got go. it. All right, I got it. All right. And while Dave's gone over to the bench, I'm going to go ahead and clean up the deck here and lubricate any of the things that we can't get at with the engine in place. Okay, now what we're doing here is I got to transfer these pulleys right here over here to our new engine. First thing I need to do, though, is get a measurement on it because I want to make sure I get them lined up properly so all our belts will line up for our undercarriage there. This is about five inches right there, so we'll pull that off. Let me get a screwdriver over here. Take our jam screws out. Get those loose. Now, this, these are keyed on, by the way, and sometimes these pulleys can be kind of tough to get off. 
since this hasn't been off for probably 20 some years. What we're going to use is a puller like this. Now you got to be a little careful on this because these pulleys can be a little bit soft. They've got a soft metal to them so you can deform them. So you got to be careful when you do this. If it doesn't come off very easy, then you have to take your time, be careful with it. Okay, I've got this thing pretty well cleaned up now. Thought I'd move on to the electrical system because we need to have that to operate the electric starter. Now, I cleaned out our half-ton pickup bed here. There's a panel right here that was bolted on the back. I took this panel off. That made a great place to mount our starter solenoid. And all I had to do was drill two holes and put a couple screws and nuts through there, mounted that right there. And of course, I got a pink wire here. This is gonna go and be the trigger wire from our ignition switch to the solenoid. The heavy red cable, obviously, is the battery positive from the solenoid to the starter. Make sure you put some kind of sheathing in, rod them so they don't chafe anywhere. Okay, next, we've got to bring a battery cable out to the battery. We've got some holes here, which I'm going to take advantage of. Again, make sure you got sheathing in here. Okay, I'm going to pull this through. I'm going to mount this cable also to the solenoid and put a nut and a washer on it, tighten it down good. Now, remember, when you're doing this kind of stuff, you fabricate and you're having fun, but think about what you're doing. These things vibrate like crazy. You know, a little four-cycle engine running there and the blades. Make sure you use lock washers on everything. Now that that's all tight, I can put this back in place. It slides right in here like so. And it's held in place by one screw, so it makes it real easy to access it if you ever have to get in and change cables or tighten them. Put the screw in here. Once we've got the plate in place, now we've got our live wire, our positive wire coming off the solenoid. Now it's time to mount our battery. It was too hard.